Hey there. I mean, it's true, right? Uh, in my early days of computing, before I actually heard of Linux, I was using Unix. Uh, it was a Solaris system on the university. Um, and the concept back in the day was that, uh, well, the internet wasn't that widespread, uh, prim primarily. Uh, and even the part that it was widespread, there, there was no social media, there was um, no uh, big way of interacting with people. We had uh, IRTS servers, IRC, uh, and I only knew of one server, one IRTS server, uh, and basically all of the people on it uh, were from my own country, and um, the, the whole thing didn't feel as global as it does now, right? And um, we had this one major server uh, on the university where basically everyone had an account on. Uh, we, we had a, I remember we had a two megabyte quota, uh, li like a file storage limit on, on those accounts. And it was, um, it, it was kind of nice and tight and cozy. Uh, I remember once asking to to have my limit increased to four megabytes, but they refused. Um, so what can you do, right? Um, so w what about the title, right? Uh, there is a command on Unix systems, on Linux as well, uh, which has been long forgotten. It's called finger. And what the finger does is basically it just uh, prints out the information about the other user on the system. Um, basically you type finger uh, and then the username of the other user and it will tell you uh, their name, their phone number uh, and basically their plan. Uh, th their, their plan is just a text file. It wasn't that common uh, but s some of us have been using the dot .plan file in our home directory to have a um, kind of a small diary of sorts, not exactly a diary uh, in the traditional sense, but more like uh, w what am I up to, uh, what am I, what am I, I am doing, and um, s stuff like that. Sometimes we would put some humor in there. Uh, some people wrote poems. It it was basically a part of the finger command, and I mean not directly, but indirectly. I mean when you would finger. Uh, a different person, and I mean that in a com computing way, uh, the finger command would retrieve uh, the information about that user and dump the dot, the dot, dot .plan uh, file uh, on your terminal output. So you would basically be able to see that uh, what that person has um, presented for for others, right? So um, one well, one of the other uh, things that uh, finger command would do is give you uh, the terminal uh, that the user is logged on from. So if you were um, on a campus and you want to find that person, you could you could see with the finger command if they are online or not, and which terminal is it? So you could go and physically find them if you knew where that uh, particular terminal was, right? And another um, thing about finger command is that it could work over the network as well. Uh, so basically, if uh, the servers uh, or computers were interconnected, some of them were at the time, then you could basically use the finger command on a different computer, on a different server. Uh, you would just um, t type the query in a way that you are uh, fingering a person from a different system and it would use a, a certain port uh, on the TCP IP and it would just retrieve the data uh, for you. Uh, in order for that to work, uh, the other system would need to have a finger daemon installed and basically all the systems uh, pretty much did have that. Uh, installed. In the early days of internet it wasn't such of a big deal to have your personal information exposed. It was actually uh, deemed to be practical. You would just have your name 
your real name and your phone number, maybe your email address uh, and stuff like that. You, you would have that on your uh, username and everyone, o almost everyone on the internet could just see it uh, if they knew your username uh, and um, if they were on the same server as you were, uh, like I said, like um, university servers and similar, uh, then the internet connection uh, wouldn't be required. You would need to only uh, have local access to the server, right? Later on, there were some exploits, some, some worms uh, happened that were exploiting the vulnerability of Finger Demon and basically uh, very soon after that, all the Finger Demons were kind of shut down uh, in pretty much every server in the world one by one because they haven't been useful anymore. I mean, the social media started to happen uh, very slowly, but uh, it has. And the whole idea of... Um, it, it was the, the dot .plan file, it, it was kind of a, a premonition of uh, blogging, if I could say that. Not necessarily the uh, blogging what we consider it to be today, but it, it kind of had that vibe to it. And uh, ba basically that's all there is to it, right? If you are a Linux user, uh, you can install a finger command. Uh, if you're in Debian, just type up get uh, install finger and it will retrieve the um, uh, client for you and you can use it to uh, use, you, you, you can use the finger command on other user on uh, your own system. Uh, you will not have the finger daemon by default. I'm not even sure if it's still installable uh, from the repository, but uh, it's usually not a very smart idea to have that installed because you're clearly having a security issue by doing that. But just the uh, client command, you can, you can install that and play it on your own system and see how it used to work, right? So... Um, I mean, that's kind of a retrospective. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my little story. Uh, and if you want more of these things uh, from the past, uh, feel free to voice your opinion in the comments. Uh, if you didn't like it, I don't know, maybe leave it a uh, thumbs down. I'm fine with every feedback I can get. So uh, see you in the next one.